In this video, I will show you around my two-year hardcore world without shaders for the first time. You can now join my Patreon for free to get the starter house schematic and stay up to date on future releases. Or get early access to the world download with a paid membership. Enjoy the tour. Hey guys, welcome to the 5000 day world tour. I have my weather effects off, the daylight cycle off and mob spawns off. And I'm in creative because um, the last world tour I realized that I absolutely hate rocket sounds. Also, I already recorded this world tour. And it was garbage. I miss so many things. Uh, let's go check it out. We are at the starter house right now. The starter house is the first thing I built. It's pretty cool because it's up in the sky. I will show you guys in a minute. Before we do that, here we have the main storage part of the house. I used this for a long, long time while I was building up the perimeter for the main base. Main base, we can just about, we can almost see it from here. We can just about not see it. The starter house is, um, has got a lot going on. One of the beauties of it is I found the floating rock that it is built in and I didn't alter the shape. So I completely hollowed it out. You can see that the walls are one or two blocks thick at the most. And I've really made the most of all this space. Here we have the enchanting setup that I used. If we go further down into the basement, we're going to find another floor. And this one is, is just fancy. This is just uh, just for decoration. Um, here in the corner, we have fireworks for the fireworks of the starter house. I'll put a replay mode clip so you can uh, see what the fireworks look like. They're pretty awesome. We have Starry Potter here, who spawned under the stairs and did not have diamond armor, but we, we gave him a little bit of a presence. <laughs> well, there we go. From already recording the world tour, the dragon egg is now here. It's supposed to be there. Beautiful. On the piston, that saved my world. It's... um. It is wild what happened there. Check out the thousand day video if you, if you don't know. It's, it's insane. It's my most crazy Minecraft story I will ever have 100%. Here we have some spare music discs. The complete collection is right there in the sugar box. And if we go further down, we get to the basement where we have the fireworks lever. I'm just, I'm just going to flick it. And you're going to hear fireworks. It's going to be noisy. Let's turn it down. Here we have my starter books. Oh my god, the sounds, the sounds. I have my villagers that I used for trading early on. I have no bread villagers and I haven't taken them from a village. So all these guys came up here as zombie villagers. And they did that via this way over here. I made a, a bubble elevator. So you can go all the way up, all the way into the house. Pretty fancy. And there we are. I love building that, putting that together. Here we have more fireworks. And there's a couple more fireworks dispensers. Um, I think we have... Uh, we have one over... Here? On the outside? Oh, we have two actually. We have one there. Which is empty, but I suppose the uh, hopper underneath. The dropper, the dispenser. This one's not empty. There we go. And here we have a similar construction. Close that off. And then there's a couple... Those are filled from the villager area. Well, that is the starter house. We can walk all the way around here if we want to. It's a pretty cool thing. And then now I'm going to do something that makes me very happy. I'm going to go and jump twice. And now we can just run to the base. And we don't have to have stupid rocket sounds in my recording. Oh my god, I love this. We got a double vec though. I'm moving too fast. Because from the starter house, we, we have this whole installation down here. Pretty neat. And um, I've made it so that if you jump out of the house... You can walk all the way to the main base. So if we go over here, we have a little pathway. It goes down here, then it turns into the mountain. And even here, there's tiny bits of decoration. There's a cool little balcony here. We got another one over there, but um, we actually got to go up here and then run around like so. And then this puts us on a pathway that is called the Mangrove Trail. And the Mangrove Trail is pretty amazing because it leads us all around the world. From the starter house, way to the main base. The main base is uh, the main attraction of the world as well. I've been working on that thing for almost 5,000 game days. There are very few other projects in the world, which may sound crazy, but you're going to see why that is the case. First off, let me complete the mangrove trail just for the experience. Damn you vines! Here in the forest, connected to that pathway. This is a pretty new addition. We have the... Um, jungle temple that I custom built. I honestly think this is a cool design. I like it a lot. And I think I forgot how to enter this thing. I feel like 
we take a book here, put it there. <laughs> what what what's the code? Two and six. Four and six. One and <laughs> I'll have to figure that out. A secret entrance that doesn't work anymore. It's a cool little basement here. This temple is uh, connected to the shorts. If you know, you know. If you don't know, check out the GeoGuessr short. It's pretty cool. But this is this is like a small side project. I had a lot of fun with it though. And then if we go over here, we already see the mountain, the castle. That is the main thing. And it's it's crazy. It's crazy. It's going to blow your mind if you haven't seen it yet. And if you have seen it, I think it's also going to blow your mind. Because in the last thousand days, or 1500 since I did a world tour, it has changed a lot. Once we get to the village here, we have this tower. This tower, this tower is fun. It's like the most underwhelming build in the entire world. There's not much to say about it. It looks a little, little goofy, but it's here for a reason. Um, I found after some trial and error and some towering up with dirt that this right here is the best spot to take a screenshot of the base, especially if we zoom it in a tiny little bit. I mean, look at that. That's like, it's not going to get much better. So um, what I did is I built a tower <laughs> so we could take the screenshot easily. And then recently I added a little bit of decoration around it. I want to add some more details like, like this crop field here. They bring your world alive. And here we have a cool little house with a flower garden. We have the windmill and we have a beetroot and a crop field on this side. And then here there's a custom river that goes through the forest. Custom because, well, there was no river, but I felt like it needed something going on in the area. We have two big custom dark oak trees and <laughs> kind of funny, but the forest changes by them in the middle. So this tree has a half dark leaves and half bright leaves. I mean, it, it's a thing. It exists. Here we have what I think is the mayor's residence. I never really had a purpose for the build, um, but I, I had an idea of what I wanted it to look like. I just put it together. I like it a lot though. And then here we have a couple freestanding houses, fancy stuff. They don't have interiors yet. They're not fully finished. But they give a nice feel to uh, to this part of the village. And then on the mountain we have a couple trees now. But we're not going to go there quite yet. Because there's two other builds right here that I want to show. First off we have the marketplace. All sorts of stalls. Um, where, where you can buy and sell stuff. A little plaza here. This place is called The Junction. And it's a tribute to all my stream moderators. And everything they've done for me. And then here we have the barn. And the barn is cool. I like the interior for the barn a lot. This feels so alive. Here in the basement, we have uh, melons. And then over this way, we have some... Oh, wait, I didn't change my FOV back. We have some shelves with cakes and some general storage. And then if we go further up over the stairs, we have pumpkins on this floor, a pulley system to bring them up and down, and then hay bills on the top. L little secret, most most of these are snow. Don't tell anybody. I like these pulleys a lot. They, they make it feel very alive. And then here we have some, some extra hay bales as well. And then right next to the barn, we have a much, much, much more important build. It's a tavern. It's it's a barn without an end. It's a bar. We call it the creep-in though. And in the creep-in... He's not very talkative. Oh, there you go. Hello, buddy. In the creep in, we have a tavern, which has some really cool interior. I, I like this place a lot. We have a uh, little, little terrace up top. Quite the view. It feels funky that this has tropical feels, but then this has snowy feels. Now, there is a reason for that. I'm I'm not going to build something without a reason behind it. Castle's called Winter's Hold. Do with it what you will. And then down here, the tavern continues with some small booths. Little uh, flower pots on the table as glasses. I like those a lot. Some paintings as well, and a more creeper-themed interior. I like these flags a lot. I was very happy when I put those together. I bet you want to see the main base. One thing before we go. This snow was a lot of work. I need more of it. I, I, I'll, I'll just have to do it. We need more. I think it's going to continue right over here. And then on the other side of the mountain, we'll, we'll add a little bit more. And we have to sort of blend it at the edges where, for example, this tree is covered and then this one and then maybe a little bit of this one, some, some snow here. Um, but the idea is that there's like an, uh, a pretty hard edge, a little bit of blending, but the snow has to end somewhere like it would with the snowy biome, for example. Now, if you took the mangrove trail, you came all the way from the starter house, you'll end up right about uh, there. Whee! And then the pathway continues all the way up the mountain. And when I say all the way up the mountain, well, I, I really do mean all the way up the mountain. It goes right over here, and then it turns right into the mountain, where I made a little Christmas build. Th this build looks amazing when it's Christmas Day. 
because uh, these will be present chests. Look very cool. But also, we, we have the kelp presence on the bottom. And then right here, we go through the tunnel, goes around the mountain, turns right under here, and then it weaves around. Has a little tunnel where it goes through, comes out on the other side, and right there. Then it goes up here, spirals around, and then it goes into what we call the wonky tower. The Wonky Tower is um, here for two reasons. It's a firework engine, uh, and also it leads us into the Ice Cave. The Ice Cave right here, I like this place a lot. This is inside of the mountain, but we need it to get all the way up to the castle because I need this world to be walkable. We can't just only invite friends with an Elytra. That, that's, that's stupid. If we go up here, that will lead us to the castle gate, and now we're going to get to the good stuff because last time we did this, I didn't have any interior in the castle. It was a mess, but now there's so much to see. So if we go in here, this is the main entrance, and you can see that there's these bridges well that's a defensive position if anybody wants to uh wanted to capture a castle it ain't happening if we take the stairs up here this goes to the throne room we'll be back here in a minute but first i want to show you that defensive position which we enter through a guard room right here and then we have the farm here and if we go under here that puts us on the bridge where we just were so we can shoot our bow do i, do I have a we can it's the wrong title we can throw rockets on their head here we can <laughs> double back. This is uh, this is a tight fit. Um, that is the outside of the mountain. And then if we go back over here, there there is some, there's a secret here. There is a secret. Can I enter it? That's the question. Here we have the archery range and the farm. So if the castle's ever under siege, we gotta make our own food. Okay, okay. This is my moment. I, I was born for this. I was I was maybe not born for this. Wait, no, 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 no. I can do it. This is the one. Amazing! That puts us in a secret passageway. You're not gonna tell me that has redstone on it. Okay, that very much has redstone on it. <laughs> I need to address that. But if we go through here, this actually leads into the throne room. To a very important spot where we can't go get any other way. The throne room is actually the gateway to the rest of the castle. So we would come out on the staircase right over there. We got the throne, which I like a lot especially from down on the floor it looks pretty impressive so if there's a, like a big speech that'd be me right there i'd be sitting there I'd, I'd be i'd be talking to the commoners well no well like you maybe i'll be talking to you so that's the throne staircases on either side work and we're gonna go to the upper part of the castle later but let's check out the lower part of the castle first because there is a lot going on in the castle now if we have the throne then across here we have a door and that goes into the lower castle where we find two different stairwells you can go across here that is the east wing this is the west wing and then we go in here and this is going to lead us to the castle apartments where fancy people have their own homes let me put it like this you, you want to be these people you, you don't want to be in the dungeons here we have the chapel fancy people chapel here we have the fancy people library and storage and then if we go here we have an important room where the fancy people feel like they're they matter here they have meetings council meetings about how to defend this magnificent castle of ours and over here we have apartment number one i'm gonna fly through these because there's quite a lot to show so here we have a staircase going up and all these apartments are somewhat similar but very different in layout so here we have like a workbench here's the bed and they all have one common feature which is these windows going through the center and that is the castle dropper which is a really important part of the base. This is what makes it work. We got apartment number two. Again, we can go to that central dropper. It's just for entertainment. If somebody drops down, you want to see that. Bedroom. I like this bed design a lot, by the way, with the lecterns as a headstand or headboard. And then we have a third apartment, which is right here. And this one's quite different because we have to loop back over the stairs. And then we come out here. This goes to the dropper. And then here we have some like a living area. And then here we have the bedroom. That is a big bad. Okay, let's get back down there. And then across the hall, there's one more apartment that is right above the other ones, above the hallway. And this is uh, like the fun party people apartment. It's just a small bedroom over here. But then if we go up here, there is the biggest table with the most glasses in the entire castle. And some food storage. And then right here, there is a closed for construction sign. So we can't go there. If you go down a floor from the apartments, we get to the more common area. Here we have some storage. Here's like a small sitting area. And then we have two sleeping rooms. We have this one over here. And we have another one on the other side, down the hallway here. 
sleeping room number two. And then right in the middle between these two, we have a bathing room. I like this one a lot with the glass panes here. And then across here, we could go to the other wing of the castle. And in this wing, we're going to find the training area, which we can look down into the training arena here or even from way up here. Now, this training arena is pretty cool because it is perfectly balanced. It's a 100% symmetrical room. If you pay attention to the sand structure here at the bottom, you, you can notice. And you can uh, parkour around the side. Uh, there's a way to get up here. And then you can go up here on the lantern even and jump all the way to the middle if you're any good at the game. And then right here, this is the other side. So we came into the room right over there. And then here we have like a small forge. And on the other side of the arena, down here in the bottom, we have a bit of metal storage and here a workplace. Okay, so now from the arena, we're going to go to the other side and take the stairwell further down. Dungeons level one. Here in the dungeons, we can still see that central dropper. You can see that there's something down there. We're going to explore that in a minute. And then here there's different parts of the dungeon. Here we have small decorative cells. This is like the worst part. There's lots of skulls down here. Bloody business campfires. Yeah, you don't want to be here. And then here we have the torture room. Chains, skulls, chains above candles, bloody... And these things, oh my god. And if we go out here, we get to the bottom of the stairwell. Then if we loop back here, there's a higher part of the dungeon, which has small but functional cells. These are pretty cool. You could actually lock up a player here, open the door, close it. And now we're on the other side of the dropper with the other stairwell. And this is why I want you guys to have a world download. You need to be able to walk around because there, there's no way to truly appreciate how cool this place is to, look, to walk around without walking around. Now these cells, they, they look kind of funky. They, they look a little expensive and they are because these are meant for like important people who are, who are captured. And here I had a mishap. I slept. Kind of. Right there. Got up before the night skip, but it's in the statistics, so it counts. And then here, guys, this is the royal cell. This would be where a uh, opposing king or a misbehaving member of the royal family gets captured. And that's the dungeons, except for one thing. Because there's one cool hidden gem. If we click this button right here, there's a secret passage. And this leads into the castle treasury. And we can look out into this cave, which we're going to visit a little while later. So if we want to get down there, we need uh, this stuff. Then we need to find the right furnace. And that one. And now I got to find a secret button. Run around quickly and that will open the door. And now this room is full of secret buttons and doors as well. But first we have the treasury over here. Where we have all the fancy valuable blocks in a cool room. Now from here we can go two ways. Either we can find a secret button right here. That will let us go back the way we came. Or, if we're adventurous, we can jump around here. Look for that button. And that will put us into the main base. Now, there are lots of ways to get here. So, let's try out another one. I'm going to teleport back up. This is going to be awesome because now we get to really see how this base operates. If we go up here... There's a Ender Pearl Stasis Chamber. I'm going to drop that pearl back in there uh, because I got it from the creative. Um, this trapdoor activates, teleports me back up here. And the room where we are right now is the teleporter room, which is the highest room in the lower part of the castle. The entire part of the castle that we just visited was all the way around here. And I think it extends. The treasury room is touching right here. The dungeons are right about here. Um, that big room that we just, just saw, the big cave that we saw from the treasury is here. And then the lower castle is this entire area. But we want to visit the upper castle first, and then we're going to go to the base. Now, to visit the upper castle, you can't just go there, because that would be a uh, security hazard. So normally, if you go into the castle, and you want to get to the upper castle, you need to have access, which means somebody needs to let you in. Right, so once we get there, there's this door where we can't go through. We can go around, and then... We'll find this little room. And then that is the teleporter room where we just were. This goes to the other stairwell. And then this over here goes to the castle garden. But that one is blocked too. Let's go back to that first door. And I'm uh, I'm, I'm just going to use my creative powers. I'm just going to punch through it. 
Now we're in the upper castle. There's a door here that can be opened from this side and then it can be locked from this side. Let, let's explore this place. One of my favorite things about the upper castle is that if you're flying around it on the outside, you're going to see all these balconies. There's like a balcony here and then here there's a little top of the tower bit. And then here there's a balcony. We got balconies here. There's a little garden here. And it was a massive challenge to get it to work. But eventually I found out ways to connect every single part of the castle. So wherever you want to go, you can actually go there. So we have storage here. This has the Ender Pearl Stasis Chamber Supply. That will not run dry for a while. And then if we go out here, we have the balcony that is right above the garden or the farm. This is circuitry. This is a redstone wire. And I've hidden them in every single tower. They are part of the fireworks system. I'll show you guys a replay mode clip of that fireworks show now because that's absolutely insane. Okay, and then the upper part of the castle, there's a lot to show here as well. Uh, this is like the main room. This was the most difficult one to design and I'll show you once we're up there because I designed the outside of the castle first and then I had to figure out a way to make the inside look good, which was a challenge in many places. Here we have the balconies and this leads back inside and we're in the top of that room. And here we have the Royal Library. This is, this is the one that the king, aka me, would use. And here we have an epic view of the village from way high up. Uh, we're going very, very high up here because right now that is about sea level. So that's like Y62. The top is like five blocks from build limit. And we hit the bedrock at the bottom part of the base. So it's a full build limit to build limit build, which is kind of nuts. And then this many details inside as well. Here there's a... Uh, tiny little table and as I said every balcony has a way to get there and then if we go up the stairs here this will lead to the royal quarters this is uh, the fanciest part of the castle there's a lot of room here we have a small inside garden and then if we go here we end up in the royal bedroom and the royal bedroom is, is kind of cool this is the royal bedroom it, it just looks cozy it looks neat it's uh, in the top of one of the castle roofs but there is another way to get here and I'm going to show you that. There's a chimney right here. If I'm out in the world with my Elytra, I just said it two ways. <laughs> if I'm out in the world with my Elytra, I would be able to fly in here. And that puts me in the castle. Little secret entrance. Then if we go out of the royal bedroom, we can go to the right. And then here we have that room that I said. This is roof supports. That is roof supports. Here we see a roof. We have white walls. We have sandstone walls. And this is a place where everything had to blend together. And I'm actually really stoked at how I made this work because this is kind of insane. Um, the room shouldn't exist, yet it doesn't feel super unnatural. And it, it just, I love it. I love it. This is one of my favorite places because it was such a challenge to put it together. Then here, there is a letter. And this letter brings us to two parts. It brings us way to the top of the tower like the, the topmost tower of the entire castle, because as I said, I can, you can walk anywhere. But it also brings us to this viewing area, which is just, this is such an incredible view. That's crazy. And then if we go here, there's a little ladder. I'm, I'm just going to float up. This brings us all the way to the top of the topmost tower, where we find Meowton. Hey, buddy. You good? And then if we go back down here, this tower is pretty interesting because this too has plenty of fireworks hidden in the walls. I think the fireworks set up is uh, my, my proudest part of the entire build. The, the fireworks setup is just crazy. So that's the top part of the castle. There is another part that we didn't get to yet. And then if we go in here, we find two cool things. We find my first armor set that made me survive 5,000 days, which has been retired now, which is why I have this beautiful new kit. I think it's a cool upgrade. I like it. And then here we have the first part of the castle that I, um, that I decorated a long time ago. This is the uh, castle interior garden and it goes up to the roof. Let's uh, let's walk up here with this cool balcony here, which has a great view as well. And then if we go further up the winding stairs, we have all these cool nature details, all these, these plants that I imagined here. And then we have this old pink tree, which I made before the um, cherry blossoms were in the game. Another balcony with quite the view here and all these cool details with the shelves and the... And as I said, every single balcony in the castle there is a way to get there i think that was all of the upper castle okay with all of the upper castle done now you would say that this is my main base and it kind of is but it kind of isn't because you already saw it this is only the decorative front but if we go in here and i'm gonna go and uh turn survival mode on for a second just so it all works the way it should we can jump down here through the hopper 
And that puts us in an interesting room. I'm gonna go back to creative because I want to show you something. This room right here, this is the walkway. This is how we get into the castle because I made it so that you can walk all the way to the bottom. I'll show you in a minute, but first, let's find the secret door here. If we fall in here from the dropper, we can go here. And that puts us in the storage room. Now, it is not the most high-tech storage room, but it is a good job at letting me store all my resources that I've been using to build up the base. This base is only the beginning of the world. Like, once this is done, I'll be able to do any project I want in no time. And I honestly think that the next one I gotta build, automated storage, because this has gotten out of hand. Now, from here, we can go down into the main area of the base. If we walk through here, this will open up. And this puts us on a big suspended bridge. This massive cave area is the engine room to my base. You can see that it's a little messy right now. There's there's a couple things I want to address. First, we have a lot of torch spams on the wall, and that is going to be fixed in the next thousand days. Because first, I want to decorate all the areas. This area here has its first bit of layout. This area down here is pretty much done. Uh, this area here as well, and you can see that I removed the torch spam here already. Here we have the main hall. Now, this whole cave is built around a uh, civilization that lives inside of it and has been extracting all sorts of resources. And there's lots of resources here, both in terms of lore, but also just in terms of, well, there's lots of resources here. Because if we go around here, for example, this is the engine room, as I've been calling it. There, there's just stacks of farms here that are producing everything I need. This part, for example, has honey bottles, it has cactus, it has honeycombs. The wool farm, which has been moved, pumpkin farm, lots of melon farms, and glow ink as a byproduct. And then there's way more farms here. If we go across this side and we go back up onto the walk bridge where I entered, we're going to find another storage room just like that one. Right around here. This one is not fully decorated and accessible yet. Here we have chorus flowers. We have chorus fruit. We have lots of basalt because that's what I've been using to build up the cave. And we have a wheat farm and there are wheat seeds. And there's more farms here that go to different storage rooms. We have a nether tree farm. Um, there's a concrete converter right here. Mushroom farms, sugarcane farms, bamboo farms. And the farm that I've probably used most out of everything. This is a basalt generator. And I think that about covers it on this side. The cocoa bean farm. Amazing, wonderful contraption. And then down here, there's another redstone door that lets us go outside. But that's not even all the farms. There's still more. Down here, I have a bamboo farm. And there's one just like it on the other side. I already had a bamboo farm back there, and that's the one I actually used for bamboo that I built with. But these two, they both go into a system in the middle here, which is my super smelter. If we go through here, drop anything on this pressure plate, it will get picked up by a bunch of minecarts and distributed into more than 90 furnaces and smelted up. And then once it gets smelted up, you can find it in a room down here on the bottom, which has a noise switch. If we press that lever, we flick that lever, all the droppers stop working. But this is the output for the super smelter. Shift click every type of one item and it, it's pretty pretty quick. Especially if there's multiple shortwares of the same stuff in there. Then here we also have a bunch more farms. Um, we have the kelp output. We have a glowberry farm. Uh, we have lots and lots and lots of slime farms. And we have a drip zone farm. And those are all collected into this room. Here there's a little cave where I have uh, one sugar that is a leftover relic from my sugar farm. I have I've so many sugar shells now that I removed it because we didn't need any more. And here's another backup sugar. And if we get in here, we can find the glowberry farm and a kelp farm. Both are pretty small. And then this is one of the many, many slime farms. Across this entire bottom of the perimeter, we have iron golems in slime chunks, which I found by just having everything spawn proof and letting slime spawn. Back here, that will make a mess, but in here there's a dripstone farm, which I put on a manual activation system. The flying machines would break if I was flying around and that didn't work all too well. So if you press a button, it will harvest up everything, which is eight tons, so it's, it's enough for forever. And then down here we have lines that go into the storage room that we were just in. And this area, I've, I've just used it for mining deep slate whenever I needed it. Now, you would say that's probably all of the farms for this base. But it's not. It's not. Because if we fly down here, this is the green area. We're going to have those rocket noises in the video now anyways. Um, in the green area, I have a uh, bit of a 
custom C, and if we go through that, we'll end up back here. And this is where my iron farm is, because you absolutely need an iron farm. But I also had to be very careful that I couldn't spawn the golems anywhere else. And th this farm, it has all the output I need. I've had it for the, like, this is one of my oldest farms. I just built the base around it. Now, would that be all the farms? No, of course not. <laughs> if we go back here, there's a bit of an installation, which um, I think in a way qualifies as a farm. This tunnel down here, not the most decorated place. I still have to finish this. Uh, but here we get to the brewery, the auto brewery. And I have night vision potions, swiftness. We have fire rest, strength, turtle master, slow falling, water breathing, and invisibility here as well. And I like the decoration for this room. I made it look like a big industrial brewing room with these small setups where some brewing could happen. Cool storage room here. And then here we see something interesting. There are magma blocks. And they're actually not magma blocks that are a decoration of this room, but they're magma blocks that are part of the decoration of the room behind it. That room behind it is part of the forge. The story of the cave is that there's lots of resources getting extracted and they're being extracted by this uh, civilization that's building in here. And they've built the bridges, they've built the buildings, and they've also built the forge. And the forge is where all the metal, all the different sorts of metal that are being gathered under here are processed. First of all, you have these cranes, which hoist up the blocks, coming in from the mine back here. So we have a mine shaft here, we have a mine shaft here. I really love this elevator platform. That's That came out so well. And we have some copper and some iron ore and some diamond ore here as well. That then goes into the forge. And you can see all these pipes and lava magma installations as well. The big furnace, and this is where everything is being processed. As with every other building in here, you, you can walk all the way down into the bottom and it's got detailed interior. So if you go down here, there's a uh, there's a proper workshop and that proper workshop then goes into a lava bucket farm. Here I have some dripstone with lava coming out. And then there's a few interesting things going on here. Um, for this one, I'm, I'm going to have to total survival as well. I need to be able to, to take damage here. I'm just going to do it without my... Electron, we, ho we hope it works. But there's um, a couple of slime blocks here. Uh, we got one here. We got one here. <laughs> Almost. And if you did it well, you end up at that block and you can jump all the way, all the way down to the bottom and then fly away. Cool stuff. The green area is probably one of the most decorated right now. And we're going to see more of the green area. Uh, this down here, the pool is finished and it looks really, really awesome in shaders. You know what? I'm just going to toggle them for a second. A lot of this build has been designed for shaders, which I mostly use in the in the movies. Uh, but for now, I wanted to show you what it all looks like without shaders for once. We have some slime dripping down here into a pool that is actually really important. This one we need. And then down here, we have a slime lake with some active light features, <laughs> really cool stuff. And then the slime gets hoisted out of the lake by two cranes, one here, one here put into this bucket and then it gets funneled into the slime refinery. We have a big bucket down here, down in the basement of this building. We have an industrial refinery where the slime gets filtered and then processed for further use. I mean, you build with slime blocks, so you, you definitely need to be able to refine it, right? And then here in the pink area, we have um, a pathway. I, I want you to be able to navigate it fully as a player just by walking around. Speaking of that, let me show you something cool. Because we've been in a cave for a while now. Um, if I go over here, as we've done before, this will teleport me right back up. We can put an ender pearl there. I'll drop this one. And now we're up outside in the castle. Uh, if we go down here, we can walk to the bottom of the cave as well. Here we have the big main door. There's two ways to get down there. Way number one. Throw a snowball. Go through this room. Make sure you have your elytra on and take a leap of faith down here. That will put me in the cave. Next lap, we do another one. Go to here, teleport back out, <laughs> drop another pearl because creative mode. Now we could also take another route. If we go to the main gate here, we get a snowball, throw it over there to unlock it. Now we could also go over here and take the drip leaf parkour down instead. That will bring us over here into that one cave that we saw before. And this one is interesting because this is the walkway all the way to the bottom of the base. I really like this room. It just spirals around here and then puts us down here. And this tunnel leads to the firework engine room. And the firework engine room 
powers that whole fireworks show that I showed you a little bit earlier on. These are the levers that start it. If you hit both of those, it activates, but only if you make sure that the fail safe is off. Because I don't want to accidentally start the fireworks, they're crazy. Now this firework engine is insane. It's a, a 10 channel system that sends redstone signals up through these scaffolding towers to all the different parts of the castle where it makes for one giant show. As I promised you guys, we're going to get all the way to the bottom of the base. So this over here is a tunnel that goes to my storage room. We've been here before, cool stuff. Let me actually go through this door real quick. Um, because this will put us in the uh, inside the double wall of the mountain. So up there, you can see the lower castle. This is the big cave that we were just in. And here we have some spare room. And then under the ceiling here, under the basalt, we're just going to find the main cave. But we just came from there, from the firework engine room. And then if we walk right across, we get to a tunnel. It's a long tunnel, so I'm, I'm just going to fly through. I needed it to go all the way to the bottom of the base, which to me was really important. I wanted to have a base where you can literally walk around you don't have to fly and then this will put us out in the green area and from here we can continue walking all the way down so this pathway folds double here goes over this way we follow it like so and then here you have a pretty cool viewpoint like you, you can see the entire cave it, it's big i really want to do this blue area next because there's a few parts of it that i really hate right now honestly if you look at it you can imagine for yourself which parts i've decorated and which parts i haven't and then this cave keeps on going because we still need to go much, much further down. There's a cool custom mushroom cave here. And if we go through that, we end up here where we have to do this. Aim for a slime block, land on a barrel, jump across here over the slime lake. And it goes into yet another tunnel, which has another cool mushroom cave. And then finally, it's going to output us here where we have the green area greenhouse. Really cool interior build as well. As you can see, guys, there's a ton of stuff to walk around here. A ton of stuff to see. And I would very much encourage you, go get that Patreon World download. Um, you're, you're not going to regret this. Walking around in this stuff is special. So usually when I'm doing construction, I want everybody on stream to be able to see what I'm doing, which is why we have a night vision dispenser here. That ties into that auto brewery, so it's automatically refilled. For just walking around here, it's not the coolest view. So I can also use a milk bucket here from my good friend Bartholomew to reset my, uh, my visuals. And that was the main part of the cave. There's one thing I still got to show you, which is the main hall right here. We've not been back here. This is where all my villager trading happens. It was, it was a struggle to get these guys in here. And as I said before, I haven't bred any villagers. So these all, I found them as zombie villagers. These are the farmers. That's my main emerald source. And then here I have a, a bone meal farm. Then if we go around here, I've moved my enchanting room here. Because if you've watched my videos, you know that I'm always level 69. Uh, the way I do that, whenever I go to level 70, I either go enchant something or I just get a name tag and an anvil and name an item, anything, uh, just to lose the one level. Uh, this is the enchanting room. It's pretty cool. I, I like it as an upstairs part as well. There's one more trading room which isn't completely full, uh, but this is where the masons are. And I think I'm going to put a bunch of clerics over here, but I'm, I'm not quite sure. Here we have one more thing. This is where I've been mining stone. <laughs> like That's where all the bricks and stuff come from. And then here there's an automated amethyst farm, which collects amethyst buds in there. Well, not the buds, amethyst shards. All right, that's all for the base. But there's one more thing I still want to show you because we need to be able to get in and out of the base quickly. Um, otherwise, I lose a ton of time just navigating. So if we want to go somewhere quickly, this is the way we do it. Teleport up. Jump down into the dropper. Then I can swim through the secret gate that we did before. And if I jump right down into the middle, we're all the way back down. So taking a lap through the base, even though it's this absolutely massive, I think it takes about 20 seconds. And that has us out in the world again. I'm just going to use spectator to fly a little further, a little faster, but the base ends right there. And then here I've built something new. Uh, this was a really cool project. I gave myself five hours, five hours to build a, a new castle. And honestly, I think I did super well. I've never played Minecraft as insane as I did that day. I butterfly clicked the entire thing, all the pumpkin placements. But in here, I now uh, have a sheep farm. The sheep farm 
took way more time than the fortress itself. I think I, I spent like 13 hours building the sheep farm after five hours of building the fortress. Up here we have the collection system for it. So the sheep farm has all the colors sorted out. If I dye all the sheep in one color, I'll get about 17,000 wool of that color per hour. Now, if we go into spectator again and we move away from the sheep farm here, there's another farm quite close. And this is a special one because it's the only farm where I have ever really AFK'd. Um, it's the only one with an AFK spot as well. This right here is the squid farm. And the squid farm was necessary because I needed ink sacks. From here, there's a bunch of nether portals. I re restored the terrain. It used to be a river. Otherwise, these farms don't work. And these maps here, I use them to calculate where the farm is because I needed the nether coordinates to link it up. But I don't use F3. So that was a whole puzzle using maps. And then from this farm, if we go over this way, we're going to get to the only other real building project. The only place where I've, I've really built anything because I needed a guardian farm. I wanted to have a prismarine and I also had a hole in the sea because I just stole a ocean monument earlier on. Now this build is, is relatively new. I think I made it in 300 game days. It was a speed build. So I really challenged myself to make a cool guardian farm build, but quickly. And I think I really succeeded at it. I like it a lot and it has some cool features. Um, we're going to need to be in creative to show you. The guardian farm is actually inside of this structure. And let me show you in spectator. There are a lot of portals here. It's a pretty insane guardian farm. It's not a maxed out guardian farm because I decided that I would rather not use all the area that we needed, but I've used a lot of it. So in all of these pillars, we have tall vertical portals and then the entire area under this box up until here, we could have used it as well, but I didn't care about it. And rightly so, the output for this thing is insane. And then right here, I made a little um, decorative feature which actually turned into something really cool because guardians can spawn in the conduit. And since the output for the farm is insane, I don't mind having two or three extra in the mob cap. They can only spawn right here. Those are the only layers that overlap of water. So I name tagged a couple. They're now called keepers of the conduit and they live here. Oh, cool feature about it. It doesn't have walls. I like the idea that this looks like a giant sinkhole and the build kind of pushed all the water outside, but there's nothing to hold it back except for some power emanating, pushing it out. And if we uh, want to pick up the drops, we have to go right over here where I put a nether portal in an iceberg. This is the storage for this thing. I've had to expand it thrice while building it. And it's it's like full. It's not, it's not full full, but it's, it's quite far full. It fills up till this chest right now. Which is crazy. I can't wait for auto crafter so I can use this. Now that we're on the nether roof anyway, here we have the output for the squid farm that I showed you before. I lied apparently because I also have an AFK spot for this frog light farm. Although I have used it for like 15 minutes, but there's no real way to make this work effectively. Um, I have to be effective with the nether farms because I don't want to build here that much for right now. Here we have the gold farm. You, you got to have one of those. And then the most interesting thing about my nether is actually a surprising thing. It's this line, because right here we have the reference point zero zero. You can find it out using map negative 64, negative 64. And then right here we'll find negative 128, negative 128. Uh, th these are the coordinates that I know in the nether. And that's how I uh, figure out where a portal needs to go. I just count from the middle and build a line over there. <laughs> that's a strat. And then from here we can um, Go back to the main base if we want to. Two more places that we need to visit. The Hall of Fame is a cool spot and it's really important because the Hall of Fame is basically um, the shared part of our journey. That's where you guys have a chance to be in the world. I'm not streaming as much as I uh, did over the past year right now because I want to focus on videos of a lot more, uh, which means more content. I think occasionally we'll just do a stream week and do a streams for a full week every day. But here, whenever I stream, I place these books here. And this, for example, is November 17th. And there's some other books from uh, special moments as memories, keepsakes here. I have all the armor trims here, as well as all the pots that you can have, all the decorated ones. And then down here, we find the Hall of Thousands. This is where I put the Thousand Day books. So after I do a milestone stream, I leave a book right here. Last one that we put down here, 5,000 days, 21, 23 pages of your names. Thanks to everybody who was there for that stream, it was epic. And then if we go out here, it doesn't shoot a firework the second time on closing, only when we open it. I've been getting better with the redstone. And then here we have the Hall of the Years. April 10th, my uh, world will turn two years old. And then we're going to collect all the sugar boxes and make another part of this art cave. Th this one's going to 
slowly develop over years, which is why it's such a mess with floating stuff here. I didn't want to build the full cave. Earlier this year, there was nothing here. So we, we have a good start. And then here, there's something funny because I told you guys I want to have my world be connected. And there's surprising ways it does that. This goes to the starter house. Completely unnecessary tunnel, but I had to make it because it was fun. And then from the Hall of Fame, and th there's another tunnel like it right here. This one goes uh, all the way across to where the village is. And then from there, we can go to the very last build that we got to show for today. Here, there's an ice spike biome, which is pretty cool. And this is what I have extended to go into the base. So this area, I want to make snowy as well. All the, this snow, it connects to another coal biome because I wanted it to make sense a little bit. I'm going to fly past this build. And I think there's another one. Okay, it took me a good minute of flying around, but I found it. This is a funny little build I wanted to show you. Day 4001, I played the entire stream without using my elytra, without flying. So I used my trident and water bucket a fair amount to move through the world, just to feel what the game is like and how everything looks. If you can't fly up in the sky. And then we built this and I love this build because it's so random and I forget about it. So every now and again, I just fly past here and I'm like, yo, that was such a cool thing that we did. And then from there, if we go over here, this is the snow farm. This place is called Mount Cheddarmore, and this is, I think, the second thing that I built after the starter house. Um, this is where I've gotten all the snow for the main part of construction. And um, here we have the, the Chattersay, as we call him. King Chatterson Jr., the 22nd, because a lot of them died. And then down here, we have the actual snow farm that I use now. And right here, we have the banner that marks out Mount Cheddarmore. And I think that is where we're going to call it a, a day for the world tour, guys. We've hit all the main attractions. And um, go get that Patreon world download if you can. And if you can't afford it, you can still go to the Patreon. And if you click the join free, you can get a schematic for the starter house so you can have it in your world. You're still going to get the world download for free whenever I end the series or die in the world. For right now, thank you guys for watching. I'll see you soon. Looney out.